In this screencast, we're going to talk about another advanced topic in MRI, bandwidth. And again, we're trying to develop a simple conceptual understanding of what bandwidth is to help us solve practical problems. When you think about bandwidth, bandwidth is more or less the sampling rate or frequency with which we're measuring the signal. And when we think about creating an image on a 1.5 Tesla magnet, and we have an assumed layer more frequency of 64 megahertz, within our gradient, we are actually going to have a slightly different layer more frequency depending on the location of the protons. So when you apply a frequency encoded gradient, you will have some protons that will be spinning at 64 megahertz and other protons that will spin at 64.5 megahertz. And when we want to identify or spatially localize those protons, okay, they will each have a slightly different unique layer more frequency. And those unique layer more frequencies are what allow us to localize them within real space and generate an image. So that's why we have a frequency encoded gradient. And when we alter the bandwidth, we alter the sampling rate that we are recording measurements from our echo. And that results in a very close relationship between our gradient strength, our resolution, and our field of view, meaning sampling our echo more frequently is going to cause us to have a larger field of view. And sampling a greater extent of our echo gives us greater resolution, sampling the tails more. So how does that impact our image? Well, if we increase our bandwidth without taking more measurements, we end up sampling less of the periphery of k-space. And because we sample less of the periphery of k-space, our resolution decreases. If we're going to take the same number of samples but we decrease our bandwidth, we end up sampling more of our echo, but we sample it less frequently. That causes an improvement in our resolution, but a reduction in our field of view. Again, the number of measurements we take is proportional to our resolution in the frequency encoded direction, and the time between measurements is inversely proportional to our field of view. When we try to practically think about how bandwidth impacts our image with relation to our gradient strength, okay, the scanners now generally compensate for changes in bandwidth by altering our gradient strength. So if we go to the scanner and we say we want to decrease our bandwidth, the scanner tends to decrease the gradient strength in order to maintain the same field of view or resolution. Or if they increase your bandwidth, it will increase the gradient strength. Okay, So increasing bandwidth causes an increase in gradient strength. Now, when you increase your bandwidth to increase your gradient strength, that is going to decrease your signal to noise. And that is because you have a greater frequency range across your image. So the difference between this proton and this proton, there's a greater frequency range, and we're sampling these smaller portions of the echo. And if we assume our noise here is, has a fixed amplitude, well, 
that noise is going to cause a greater impact on our the signal we're trying to observe than it would if the amplitude of the signal was larger like it is in the center of k-space. If we reduce our bandwidth, we have a weak gradient and we're the our RF signal is going to be have higher amplitude. And since our noise is sort of a fixed amplitude, the impact that our noise has on our image is going to be decreased. So we have a better signal to noise at a low bandwidth. We have worse signal to noise at a high bandwidth. When we think about how that impacts chemical shift, well, chemical shift is a misregistration of location. And it occurs in your frequency encoded direction. Okay, so at a high bandwidth or a very strong gradient, there is a greater separation between protons in space based on their layer more frequency. Because there's a greater pro separation based uh, in their layer more frequency based on space, the contribution of the difference between water and lipid is smaller, and we have a smaller artifact related to that chemical shift or that spatial misregistration. The higher bandwidth creates a comes with a stronger gradient. There's more separation between individual protons in space based on their layer more frequency. So we have less misregistration due to the separation of fat and water protons. At a low bandwidth, we have a weak gradient, okay? And that the impact of misregistration due to water and fat has an outsized impact on our ability to spatially localize our protons. And the gist of it all is a stronger gradient causes a shorter relative distance between fat and lipid protons and a greater separation based on changes in layer more frequency due to space. So you have lower artifact. A weaker gradient, you have a longer relative distance between water and lipid and therefore there's an increased artifact because the difference between protons based on their space is smaller. In summary, I realize this is a difficult concept. It's difficult to teach, it's difficult to learn. If you are going to only remember or understand a few things, realize that bandwidth is essentially the same thing as the sampling rate where we are measuring the amplitude of our echo. The number of measurements that we take is proportional to your resolution, and the time between those measurements is inversely proportional to the field of view. If you decrease your bandwidth, you will increase your chemical shift artifact.